Hello and welcome to Spirit of Nature Art and another video tutorial and today we're back in the old cut out altered book with this fabulous autumnal piece um, and it, it's been a beautiful autumn here in the UK we've had lots of lovely uh, kind of crisp sunny days and I really really wanted to capture that uh, and I cut this owl out of one of my bird books ages ago um, and knew that I wanted to do a cutout page with it and it's been sat there just waiting for some autumnal inspiration. So you can see I cut out a few other pieces uh, as well that I thought might go with it and I'm just sticking the owl down first um, because that's the piece I, that's what I want the whole piece to really work around. So I've doubled up on these pages so each of these pages is too thick so I've stuck them together two pages before I started here stuck the owl down to the middle page and now I'm just going around the edge with my craft knife uh, cutting that underneath and just taking the, the kind of basic edge away from the owl so that I can start to see the page behind it so I can see how I might build up so really easy quick and simple start to this page a key focal point with that beautiful owl and you'll see over to the uh, right there a whole load of other pieces that I've cut out of various uh, countryside and animal wildlife books so I'm going to be bringing those in soon now that owl there is going to be uh, flipping backwards and forwards, it's the main kind of centre, so I wanted to just strengthen that fold there considering I've taken half the page away now. So I'm just using some washi tape and I am using matte medium gel to stick it down because washi tape isn't actually that sticky, it's designed to be removable. So I'm using the matte medium just to make it more permanent but it just gives that central uh, area there a little bit more strength where I have cut away the rest of the page so hopefully that will stay a little bit more sturdy uh, as this book gets opened and closed so many times and all the way through I just sort of start fiddling around with these pieces that I've cut out I have edited out so much of faffing that <laughs> I honestly faffed so much with all of these pieces cutting them out sticking them together and you know what that is the fun of a collage piece like this is just to play around and one of the things that I'd really encourage you to do is if you've cut out pieces like I have is not you don't have to use them exactly as they are so you'll notice as I go through this that uh, I adjust and adapt I take pieces away I add them back in uh, these two pieces here I'm trying to weave them together so that amazing millipede there looks like he's going through those mushrooms um, uh, and you know you guys didn't need to see me fussy cutting this out um, I just used my craft knife on the craft mat and cut the details out, cut out. I wanted everything to have that peekaboo effect, so you'll notice I haven't just cut around the edge of the mushrooms, I've cut in between all the little pieces as well. So now I'm happy with where that's going, just sticking that down, just getting the key elements in here so that I can just keep kind of building off those. So just making sure that is absolutely stuck down and then starting to play around with each of the little elements one step at a time just building it up those little red berries honestly I spent forever faffing with those I wanted a little bit of color to peep out uh, from behind the owl and um, <laughs> yeah I spent an awful lot of time with that but as each piece starts to find its place I then cut out some more detail if I feel it's needed and then stick that in place as well and the other thing with this is I did this over many days I would go away come back look at it again add a few more pieces go away come back uh, just so that I had that bit of space between putting things in place just to see where I wanted it to go next so you don't need to rush these projects Part of them coming together that's sort of the joy of seeing how they all come together and one of the things that I wanted really to do with this page this page isn't the back page there's going to be another page after this so as I'm putting this page together behind the owl I'm thinking about what's going to be on the page behind that and how that is going to peek through these images that I'm placing here now so yay, finally I stuck the little berries down. They found their place. And you can see 
all these teeny tiny little bits that was a little mushroom I cut off the other side just adding it in um, in a, a different place so just you know play with your collage elements whether you've cut them out of a book like me or you've cut them out of collage you know pre-printed collage paper don't think you have to use them exactly as they are so this is where we've got to we've got the owl we've got these mushrooms and the millipede there and now I want to cut those out as well so that we can start to see the page behind that one by magic there we go <laughs> um, and again because I want that peekaboo look I am going in and cutting out all of those little spaces in between each branch and mushroom so that you can see the page behind it you don't have to go to this level of detail but this was what I had really clearly in my head uh, I, I remember when I was little I had one of those pop-up books that had so many pages behind it and that was kind of what was in my head as I was doing this. I wanted to kind of really create that depth that you get from multiple pages layered upon multiple pages. And of course I've sped this up so please take your time if you're using a craft knife. So now I'm starting to think about preparing the pages for colour, so I'm putting a layer of gesso on, just protecting the rest of the book behind it. So gessoing uh, these pages here where I'm going to add some colour to it, just so that it doesn't sink straight into those old book pages, and just to make sure that everything has got the same starting point. So uh, I'm also gessoing the back of those cutouts as well because that's just plain book paper as well and I want the colour to look the same regardless so putting all of these pages together I want each page to have that same effect. I also don't want when I'm adding the colour to uh, distort the beautiful colours of these images I've cut out so I'm just adding a layer of matte medium gel over the top of them just to seal them you can use Mod Podge anything like that so they're completely protected now and just playing around now with more elements starting to see how I want the rest of this page now to start to come together I don't want it to look like two separate pages I don't want it to look like that owl is coming out halfway through the spread so just seeing how that's all going to fit into place before I then match my colors with the items I'm going to use so you'll see I've got some distress inks here I will put the colors below but I think we've got rusty hinge and olive green and I can't remember the other ones but I will put them below and I've just squirted them all with a little bit of water and I'm going in I'm using them like watercolors basically going in with a paintbrush and just adding those colors in to start to build up the same kind of colors that are in the images there and I'm not really being too careful about how I'm adding them because I'm just gonna, here we go, spritz them with water and let them start to move around the page naturally with a little bit of help from my finger and the uh, tissue there, drying it in between each layer so that I can then go in and add another color. So I think this is a bit of rusty hinge, gorgeous autumnal color there. Putting that on there, spritzing it with a bit of water, allowing it to move around the page and drying that and I'm happy with how it's starting to look. And then, as you can see, I have replicated that on all of those blank areas, all the areas I gessoed. So I've got that kind of background color now to start to build the rest of these collage elements in. down the bottom here I want the owl to look like it's standing on that log um, so one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to cut part of that so that I can place it behind the foot so you'll see that in a minute each of these elements before I stick them down I'm just edging them with a bit of I think it's vintage photo distress ink sticking them down in place and um, here we go with the uh, Oh no, not quite with the mushroom log yet, but yeah, just starting to think about how 
things are gonna go behind as well, because I'm thinking about how each of these elements peek out from behind the previous pages. So I wanted that element to be visible even when the other pages were closed. So you can see I keep fiddling around with it, putting a bit of glue on, closing the other pages, just checking where it's sitting. There we go. So here we go. I'm gonna cut part of that mushroom image away. And then once that's stuck down, see I'm, I'm kind of not sticking things down completely because I want to layer things. Some things peeking in half out, half at the front. So just being careful when I stick things down, just like here, I am just adjusting each piece a little bit so it fits that space. Sticking that bit now behind the owl's foot. So reattaching it, it looks like it's reattached to the image in front. So we can see here how that branch kind of sits both in front and behind the owl. So now starting to go to this back page here and starting to think about how uh, I'm going to cover those. So also the backs of the actual kind of owl and the backs of those mushroom, um, I'm just starting to bring collage elements into those as well. So as you flip the pages, it all seems like it's part of this wonderful woodland scene. So just trimming off all the excess little bits um, and also edging um, where I have cut with more distress ink as well so that these each layer pops from the layer below. with such fine detail on these pages here I'd have been tempted if I do this again to perhaps stick three pages together rather than just two because uh, that page with the mushrooms on is a little bit wibbly but you know I think it'll be fine. So I'm now edging the whole spread with that distressing and really quite strongly vignetting it so really bringing it in in the corners. I want this sense of looking through a kind of tunnel into this woodland scene. And now I'm going in and doing some shading. So I'm starting off with a Derwent Inktense pencil. I imagine that this is um, Bark. This is the one I like to use most. And because I've got distress inks in the background, I'm using the teeniest amount of water on a really fine brush there to activate it because I don't want to move all that distress ink around as well. But then I actually start to use some distress inks as well for the shading. So I've squished some of those distress inks that I used on the background onto my craft mat there, a little bit of water, using my paintbrush just to go in and kind of bring those colours um, uh, kind of into um, those areas around the leaves to create more of that depth and shading. And yet another shading tool here. I am now using some, a pastel pencil just to go in and create some much darker shading uh, underneath those mushrooms and around those leaves at the bottom. So with shading, you can use so many different things, charcoal pencils, all sorts. Uh, I just wanted to match the colors I'd already used and bring some depth to them. So whatever you've got to hand, whatever matches what you're already using, just start to use those. And the more shading you add, the more depth you get and the more your images pop off the page. wanted to add even more kind of, of a, an edge to those pages so I'm just using I'm going back in now with I think this is ground espresso distress ink and just using it straight from the edge of the pad just to kind of get some of that real dark um, edging and also I'm not fussed about it being you know a little bit rustic <laughs> this is a woodland scene I really want it to look rustic and now starting to think about filling in some of these gaps that were here. I didn't like that bit of mushroom there, so I had a different mushroom, so I'm sticking that one in. Just building the page, each element at a time. And this is the beauty of stepping away from something, leaving it for a, you know, a day or an evening and coming back later. Uh, you're looking at it fresh, you see different things, uh, and you see um, 
how you might want to take those elements forward. So again, just fiddling around, this was one thing that I cut out and I've taken the leaves off and putting them back in in different places, really using those elements in the way that worked for me rather than how they were in the book before I cut them out. And when you've got really fine pieces like this, it's not the best, I didn't, to be honest with you, use the best glue applicator. I should have really used something a bit finer. The glue itself was fine, but the nozzle's quite wide and lots comes out. So quite often on this, I used a cocktail stick just to be a little bit more accurate and more um, uh, focused on where the glue was going. There, it's really starting to come together now. This was exactly what I had in my mind when I started this. So now I want to do my sentiment. So as I was going along and um, playing around with the colors and finding matches, I created, <laughs> had this little bit of scrap paper to the side here. So I thought I might as well use this as the background for my sentiment, just using my little typeset stamping kit here. Uh, and you won't be too surprised about the <laughs> sentiment that I choose to use here. Oh, and here comes Woody, joined by a different cat today. We had Roscoe last time, this is Woody this time. Um, he's come to help join in with my art. The cats love it when I do art, I think um, just because I'm so calm and chilled out, they like to come and see what's going on, a bit of curiosity. Don't get too many footprints in things, thankfully. So now just starting to uh, build the colours a little bit more on that piece of paper that I used there just to help it blend with the rest of the background. So just adding in some of that green that wasn't there. And just activating up a little bit of water just to soften it a bit, just all the way through, just trying to match all these elements so it doesn't seem like lots of different things. Just helps pull everything together. And then now just trying out where I might want that to sit. So many different places. And there's no right or wrong. It's just where it feels right for you. And I think that's where about it feels right. pleased with how this came out this this really was what I had in my mind and I'd had it in my mind for months so it's lovely to actually see it finally come together and to be able to give that kind of sense of depth that I was really looking for so I'm really really pleased with it I hope you have enjoyed watching it come together and this is how it fits into the rest of the book as well it fits really nicely with the other spreads I think too so this is where we've got to so far with this lovely little cutout altered book. So a blank page ready for the next page, which I already have an idea for in my head. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and please do join me for the next one coming very soon. Thank you.